Amanda Sashakura Zoe here, Kyoku aka Chikomant, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Teachers with Love and Passion. In the last video, we finished Mr. Hanson epilogue, and now we will move on to Edgar's new scenes and epilogues. And then after that, we will go to the secret, secret route. Anyway, I'm excited on what will happen, and let's go. Stay silent. Hmm. Look. Nope, I'm not seeing anything. Uh. I'm doing my job, and I have no idea what is happening around me. Uh. So you are not stopping me? Stopping you from what? Hmm. It's fine. Are you fine with being an accomplice of my crimes? Heh. <laughs> I'd rather be your partner. Uh. Seeing Edgar's face flush with surprise makes my heart skip a beat. It feels good to be on the other side of the tea sometimes. Taking advantage of her silence, I turn, looking for the innocent face about to get trenched. Hey, Eric. Yes? Can you check the hose for me? Of course. Oh, poor Eric. Oh, dear. For a moment, I feel bad to see his cheerful face walking towards the trap, expecting to help me and be praised. But this feeling soon goes away when I remember what happened earlier. With it in mind, I turn to Edgar. Finding the most bright smile on his face, my heart shakes with excitement, and I can barely keep a serious face. I feel like a kid, playing pranks with my best friend. The best feeling I could ever feel. Like an innocent lamb about to fall into the devil's trap, Eric walks towards the hose, confused by the lack of water coming out of it. We quietly watch him from the corner of our eyes, waiting, expectantly, for the right moment to attack. I can feel the tension building up as the boy takes the hose in his hands and brings it closer to his face. He tilts his head and looks into the hole, seriously trying to understand it. In the next moment, his concerned face turns to fright. We all hear his loud gaps, along with the sound of water shooting into his face strongly. Edgar and I quickly turn our faces in the opposite direction, trying to hold back our laughs as everyone gathers closer to see what the boy is yelling for. What are you doing? I... Are you alright, Eric? Yes, Mr. Kleiman. I don't know what happened. Our faces are red, and our cheeks hurt from holding back. I thought it was stuck, but then... <sighs> Unable to hold it anymore, Edgar lets a short giggle escape his lips. Hearing that funny sound, I feel I can't control it anymore too. Uh, the boy turns in our direction with a suspicious gaze. His eyes seek the older man's face like an eagle, hungry for the truth. Mr. Mitchell, did you... <laughs> you should have seen your face. Mitchell, seriously? Jeez, you look so amused though. Ray really looks amused. I'm so sorry, but I couldn't help it. I just wanted to. Before he can finish his sentence, every lips the hose hits in Edgar's face shot. Uh. For a moment, everyone holds back their breath, waiting expectantly for the outcome. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mitchell. But I couldn't help it. Uh. <laughs> Mitchell. Smiling bitterly, Edgar wipes his face with the back of his hand, bending down to pick up another hose. <laughs> oh 
Oh no! <laughs> Don't do it. Thomas already knows what is about to happen, and he also knows that no matter what he says, he won't stop him. Everyone gets into defensive positions as if Edgar is some type of wild beast ready to attack. A smirk crosses Edgar's lips, and a bright light shines in his eyes. Let's party! As if living in an old western time, Edgar takes the first shot at Eric. The boy quickly dodges, jumping back and holding tight to his weapon. A war of laughter, water, and screams begins. They are only aiming at each other. However, their movements are splashing water everywhere, forcing all birds to run from side to side. How old are you two? Stop it right now! Thomas yells, dodging the water pool forming on the floor. I know this is getting out of hand, but I can't help the smile on my face seeing all these adults worried about getting their clothes wet. I'm serious. If you don't stop it, I will. Uh. Thomas' orders are interrupted by a fast and direct hit of water in his face. Oh no. <laughs> With no proper reaction, the three of us look at him. Watching water dripping from his mouth as he chokes awkwardly. My eye, it hurts. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but this is serious, but still. There, I don't know why I, I giggle like that, though. Okay, I'm done with it. Tired of waiting for them to stop on their own, Marcus tore his hands up given up on working. He walks away, sitting on the bleachers to wait for them to stop, totally ignoring the wet seats. I didn't sign up for this. As if we were the only responsible adults in the room, Ray sounds heavily beside me. Eric, stop it. But he started it. You little liar. I don't care about that. Just stop it. Only when he admits it. Huh, then we are going to stay here for a long time. Uh, tired and with no patience left to argue, Ray turns to me, his eyes staring into mine as if waiting for something from me. What? You are my last resource. Please, make them stuff. I really wanted to ask Mr. Fox how he expected me to stop them, but even he couldn't do it. However, knowing how Eric likes to please me, I understand why he would suggest that. I have a better chance at this than anyone. Taking a deep breath, I take a careful step up, trying to call their attention without shouting. Guys, that's enough. I don't think this floor is supposed to take this much damage. My voice does not seem to reach them in the way I would have liked because they keep dueling as if I wasn't even here. Understanding Ray's frustration now, I decide there's no point in talking loud or tough. I need to take action. Hmm. Alright, I'm turning it off. Just like what happened to Thomas, I stop talking when I feel something cold water drops like... Wait, what's something cold water? Something like cold water drops, sliding down my cheeks. I close my eyes, stopping on track, already imagining the damage it must have done to my hair. Suddenly, silence surrounds the room. I know for sure that my sacrifice was not in vain. A smile crosses my lips as I open my eyes, ready to crack a joke about bringing beasts back into the gym. But what I see makes me hold back my tongue. Slowly, the joy of victory starts to face away. Wait, why are you flushing, Marcus? 
The joy of victory starts to fade away when I see everyone staring at me with blushing and surprised face. What? Thinking that maybe everyone is worried because I look ridiculous for being what? I look at myself. And is it at the exact moment I cast my eyes down myself that I find a reason for so much embarrassment? Is it your shirt? Is there's a high chance it's your shirt? My white shirt is no longer white. Oh no! Oh dear! Oh no! <laughs> In the transparent color, it's not hiding what it is supposed to hide. Okay, that's a that's a really bad. That's some bad situation there. Um, feeling the blood rush into my hand, I turn my back to them, holding my body tight in an attempt to hide. Instantly, I hear the sound of horses hitting the floor and I feel guilty sounds following it. I don't dare to look back, but I can imagine they are all talking to each other through gazes as they think about what to do. Well, I knew she would make you stop. Seriously? Ray laughs while I hear everyone else grumbling. I know it wasn't the best time to say that, but at least he broke the embarrassing silence. Anyway, I think I have some towers in my office for everyone to get dry. Good. And I probably have something there to help you hide your body, Miss Fine. Thanks, that would be great. Then I'll get going. Let me help you get it. What? No! Edgar's suggestion almost makes me turn around to see if he's serious. I know he wants to help, and it sure would be nice to have someone else to look for the towers with me. But just thinking about being alone with him like this makes me blush. I don't think my heart will be fine. I mean, it's my fault you are in this situation. Let me at least do this for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, this is totally not a bad idea to stay alone with a man while your shirt is really transparent. Hannah? I mean, you are Goo Gaga for him and it's hard to uh, reject. Thanks. <laughs> or, or that. Me too. Oh no, you stay right there and help us clean this mess. Hmm. Eric didn't like to hear that. However, his annoying expression wasn't enough to make Thomas change his mind. Glancing over my shoulder, I see Edgar slipping between them before Eric has a chance to make him the center of attention. Without looking at me, Edgar opens the door, holding my head down, impressed. I move quickly in his direction. Don't forget the towers. Not looking back, we move out of the gym straight to the race office. Quickly after we enter the room, Edgar tells me to wait beside a bed. He then runs to the bathroom, searching in cabinets for anything to help me dry. Slowly, I noticed my body starting to shake a bit. In reaction to that, I hurt my arms, rubbing my skin. Cold water slides through my fingers, but my skin still burns hot. My heart beats like a drum, and I can't tell the difference between excitement and cold. Silence grows longer as I tap my feet on the floor, trying my best not to think about anger and these troubled feelings. I take a deep breath. And suddenly, I feel something heavy falling on my head. Worried, I try to turn my body around. However, I'm stopped by strong hands holding my shoulder still. Don't turn. A soft, gentle voice whispers behind me. Shivers run down my spine. Slowly, I sense Edgar's body standing close to my back. 
It takes me a few seconds to calm down and see the corner of a white towel hanging on my head. Just stay still. Uh. I do as he says, holding my hands tight to the bed. Slowly and gently, Edgar draws my hair, rubbing the soft cloth on my head. His movements are cautious and caring, so much that I feel him caressing my heart. I can feel his warmth touching my back. I can hear his breath above me, and I can feel my heart bounding in agony. I'm sorry for dragging you into it. His voice is soft, almost guilty for the trouble caused. Not looking back, I smile, shaking my head subtly. It was worth it. Ooh, everyone is wet. Yes, everyone is wet. Very cute. It was good to see everyone scared with a mess while you guys played around. I laughed shyly, hearing him laugh under his breath. Thomas is not going to forgive me so easily this time. You better be ready for your punishment. Oh, I don't want to be his assistant again. My laugh echoes in the room as I hear him mumbling like a spoiled child. Edgar rubs the towel over my neck and then back to my head. We are not worried about the time anymore. I just wanted to play with a kid. I see a smile in his voice, but I don't hear it in his tone. But I guess it was stupid. No, it was fun. Uh. We may be in a bad situation, but thanks to it, we had a good time together. And I want him to know it. Though still wet and fully aware of my shirt situation, I turn around. Edgar tries to avert his arms, but as he realizes I'm not worried, he turns back to me. You shouldn't feel guilty for trying to make people have fun. Uh. Thanks to you, I had a good time working. Even if now we are both soaked wet. We smile, letting small laughs escape our lips. Me too. Silence fills the room. In for a moment, there's nothing left to say. Slowly, his hands slid from the towel to my face. His fingers gently caressed my cheek, never averting his eyes from mine. My heart races, noticing just now the short distance between us. My face blushes, but I don't dare to avert my eyes from his. I don't know what is about to happen, but I don't want to miss it. Hmm. You are so beautiful. Uh. Oh! Uh, uh, sorry. As if something clicked inside of him, Edgar pulled his body away from me. I barely have time to react to his words before he turns, already getting all the towels in his arms. Oh, I need to get this to the gym. The, the Thomas must be cold. Ah, uh, right. Don't worry about the gym and go back to the lounge. Just get yourself warm. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, see ya. Uh, see ya. Edgar practically runs away from the office, leaving me alone, leaving me alone behind. Relock time! Woo! Uh, is this good enough? Looking at myself in the mirror, I ask aloud as if I am not the only one here. My eyes are wide open, just like my smile. This is love, such a strange feeling to see in my reflection. Biting my fingertips, I rock my body back and forth, watching my skirt swing. I feel a bit childish to be worried about something so trivial, but at the same time, this same feeling makes me feel young. After what happened, Edgar and I started working on our differences and the problems we faced. It was complicated at the beginning.
Edgar had too many traumas about love, and he was scared of opening up to me. I can't say I understand all the pain he had gone through, but I knew a bit about it. My last relationship left scars all over my heart and made me feel scared to feel anything again. So even if I haven't had the same experience, I know how it feels to force your heart to lock. At some point, I think we both realized it as we found shelter in each other's eyes. We could be our own safe place, and nothing bad would come from here. Now we are finally here, ready to go to our very first and official date. Thinking about it now reminds me of the old times when I used to go out with guys. When I was younger, I used to be nervous and excited, but then it became repetitive and tiring. Soon it became so troublesome I stopped doing it. I've been through a lot, but this is the first time I'm not experiencing that agonizing anxiety in my stomach. I'm just a bit nervous, of course, but I'm not wishing for it to end already. I think this time my heart knows everything will be fine. My hands are sweating. Uh, the knocking on the door makes my heart stop for a second. Quickly, I turn to the clock on the wall. The arrows mark 1515, just 15 minutes early. Looks like I'm not the only one nervous. With a goofy smile, I walk to the door, smoothing the corners of the dress. I thought that maybe seeing his face would help my heart to calm down. I was sure his smile would be enough to assure me of this feeling. But I was wrong. When I see his face, my whole body turns cold, my head starts spinning, and my heart beats in my stomach. I used to think I would never love again. I would never feel this beautiful pain running in my veins anymore. But when I looked at this beautiful smile, I felt something scary. Hey, you look beautiful. To feel like everything is dying inside you just to be reborn again into something beautiful is scary. Falling in love is scary. I... did I come too early? Just in time. Just like always, the light concern covering his eyes disappears as soon as he hears my voice. Like a young boy going on his first date, I see in Edgar an unusual insecurity, but there is also curiosity and hope. It's good to know we are leaving this feeling together and experiencing something new at an older age. Excitement takes over my chest, and I can't hold back my smile. Well, should we go? Yes. Given our hearts no more time to worry, I wrap my purse and lock the door. We still need to take a bus, and we know it's going to be a long ride, but we are not worried. Today we are going to enjoy each other like no one ever did to us before. Okay. The wording though. Just as planned months ago, we decided there was no better place to spend our first date than an amusement park. That playful conversation we had in the administration office that day is turning real right before our eyes. I look to my side. Couples and parents with kids fill the line loudly around us. And yet, all I see is the man taking the tickets out of his pockets with a buzzer look on his face. I didn't even know my heart could melt like this until I had him by my side. Suddenly, he looks from the corner of his eyes, catching me red-handed, smiling at him. What? N nothing Then why are you smiling at that? Uh... Come on, what are you thinking? You better not be planning to prank me. You would get me first, even if I tried. Done? I'm just happy because we are together here. Uh. 
I spoke without thinking if that would sound too straightforward or not. I did it because that's what my heart wanted to say to him. The surprise expression on his face quickly disappears, leaving behind a kind smile in his eyes. I can't wait to try all the rides with you. Me too. I was talking about the attractions we would see, but the way Edgar talked to me made me realize he was talking about something else. On his face, a gentle gaze watches me. His smile at the corner of his lip overflows my heart with love. I think today is going to be alright. The sky is bright blue, the sun is hot, and people are laughing excitedly. Everything is screaming joy and fun. It took us a long time to get inside, but we found a way to have fun while we waited. Now inside the park, we look around for the many options to spend our day. So where do you want to go first? I was thinking about the roller coaster. For the first ride. What? Is that too wild for you? Girl, don't try me, or I will drag you to the ghost train. Please, no! To be honest, I have no idea where to go. It's been so long since I visited a place like this that I don't know what to look for. My eyes start from corner to corner through the ground. I see attractions everywhere. It's hard to keep up. And even so, my heart is beating excitedly, begging me to try it all. Interrupting my thoughts, I hear Edgar chuckling beside me. I turn around, but I find no reason for that. What? Your eyes are shining. It's so cute. Uh, I didn't realize I was acting like a kid until he said that. Now my face is red. And I still have no answer to our question. What do you say about a Ferris wheel? My heart shouldn't have skipped a beat just to hear something like this, but it did anyway. And I should be better at hiding it, well, but I am not. Is that too romantic for you? You are so annoying. But you like that. Laughing with no way to deny his statement, I shake my head, rolling my eyes. Fine, let's go. But we are riding the roller coaster later. Giggling as he nods, we walk side by side, holding back the urge to run around like kids. I have never streamed so much in my whole life as I have done in the last 15 minutes. After sharing a lovely time on the ferris wheel with a full view of the park and some shy pinkies intertwined, ooh, we headed to the roller coaster ride. And that was the ride. The ride down was terrifier than we could expect. When we reached the top, I was too curious to look down, and I swear I had tears in my eyes when I realized how high it was. The ride only lasted 30 seconds, but everyone screams echo for a long time after. The best part was hearing Edgar yelling and laughing next to me the whole time. It helped me cry a bit less during it. I think the almost death experience was exactly what we needed to fire excitement inside us. We rode bomber cars where I was cornered. An anger came bumming into everyone to save me. Then we took a walk inside the hall of mirrors and finally, Edgar dragged me inside the ghost train. The last one forced me to cling to his arms and tight and lightly punch him many times. It didn't matter where we went, we were always laughing and playing with each other like kids. After so much running and hustle, we decided to take a break from the rides. Now walking side by side, I look at the shop windows while he reads the booklets searching for the day's attractions. There will be a performance on the main street later. I think it's a live show by a local band. 
Sounds nice. Yeah, we should watch it. The curiosity of his earlier question slowly fades away from his voice. Suddenly, he sounds like he's lost in thought. Concerned. I turn in his direction only to find a confused expression that troubles me. Where's Brown? I thought they were holding a night parade, but it seems it's not happening until next month. Oh, so that's what it is about. He told me we would enjoy the sea with no plans, but now I know he had made some. Part of me is happy to know it. But the other part is broken to see him looking like a sad puppy. Well, now we have a reason to come back next month. It was nice to see his face getting surprised by something that seemed to make him happy. Something I could do for him. I would love to do it again, even if we had no reason at all. So, what do you want to do now? As soon as Edgar asked the question, my eyes land on an image that comes meters away from us. I squint my eyes, trying to make out what that is. It doesn't take long to make sense and quickly forces my body to run on in both. Do you want to trip there? Before he can finish speaking, I grab his hand out of sheer instant and run him through the ground. Edgar doesn't hesitate or fight my impulsiveness. Instead, he follows me around, only asking what is going on. Soon he also understands what it is about. I stop with him standing beside me and I slowly cut our face in front of us. Let's take a picture. He looks like he can't believe what just happened, and I can't blame him. However, instead of questioning me, he jerks, following me behind the court bar. We put our faces in the hole, but then I feel something that makes my stomach go cold. I turn my head to the right, and there I see he is still holding my hand. My heart races. Slowly and shyly, he caresses my skin, tightening the rope around my fingers. I look up and again, he is watching me. The staff calls our attention to the picture when we fight ourselves to turn away. I don't even know what face we were doing at that point, but I'm pretty sure we came to our red like a sign in the picture. <laughs> oh jeez. When the night came, he walked me home, always holding my hand tenderly. The day went much better than I had planned. Maybe because we haven't planned anything at all. Thanks for coming. I love it. Me too. It was so fun. I hope we can do it again. Yeah. Suddenly, it seems all that chatter from before has been left in the park. Now standing in front of my door, we look at each other nervously and eagerly looking for something to say. And thanks for bringing me home too. It's a pleasure. Uh... Uh, are you going to test me tomorrow morning? Of course, just like I said that day. Maybe you guys should kiss Ashley. Kiss too. A kiss. Okay. Hmm. So... Kiss? Hmm. Alright, you know, I can't hold it back anymore. Quickly yet gently. Edgar starts closer, covering my face in his hands. Yes, cuz! Woo! Before I can react properly, I'll lose touch in a soft kiss. His fear brushes against my skin. His hot breath makes me blush. In my closed eyes, I hold back the tears of joy to be in this moment with him. I should be surprised. I should be feeling my heart beating in every corner of my skin. But I am not. In place of restless feelings, I feel my heart beating softly, a piece for finally breaking chains around us. He leans back, his eyes glow in the night. 
I breathe a sigh of relief as love envelops our hearts. I wanted to do it all day, but I couldn't find a moment. I'm sorry for taking so long. You didn't take long, just the right time. Before leaving. Nice, nice kiss. Smiling with my whole body, I lean on him, kissing him once again. There is no more fear in his eyes, no more restrictions in his touch. And no more what ifs in our story. Love finally found home inside our hearts. Oh, Eric Queen. Okay, we will, we will, um, we will deal with this later. And that should be the end of our playthrough today for teachers with love and passion. We finished Edgar's route with new scenes and an epilogue, which is a cute date between Hannah and Edgar, and that's super duper cute. They seem to be getting along very well and very cute. And we have a snippet of every queen at the end. This looks really dangerous. I hope it's not something really bad here. <laughs> Because that stream is um, concerning, but that should be for the next playthrough of the game in which we will cover the secret route and hopefully, and hopefully Hannah will survive. Yes, hopefully. No drama, please. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next playthrough of Teachers with Love and Passion. Bye bye!